Hi, welcome to Write More Light. My name is Sarah. I am excited to um, talk to you today about something really, really difficult. Um, I potentially, potentially, this is the most difficult thing um, I will have talked about <laughs> in this whole series. Um, not because it's about writing, not because it's, um, not because writing is hard, which it is, um, but because it is a matter of huge, huge privilege and, um, we're talking about finding the time and space to write. And I made a joke in the title that, you know, this is for folks who are not wealthy retirees. Um, I, I say that because if I saw this heading on a video on the internet, I would skip it because I, I assume that the people who have the time and space to write also have money or an office or don't have children or, don't have, you know, super demanding jobs, whatever, whatever. Um, granted, I fall into a handful of those categories, but <laughs> um, this is about um, when you do fall into the categories of, I have a million things to do. I don't have a door I can close. I can't keep the world out. And um, how to work with that in order to maintain your writing or, or your art, uh, whatever it is. So um, we're going to harken back to a day when um, I was surrounded with children and I didn't have a door to close to keep myself private. Um, and this, this is like a whole project to undertake, but it will help. And um, in, in the long run, it will be useful if you do it. It is how for years I found the time and space to write, you know, living in a, a studio with roommates or um, when I took care of my, my niece and nephew um, or when I was a nanny um, or when, you know, I had a three hour daily commute to work. Um, there, have, there have been times in all of our lives, of course, when we haven't had time. And I don't know your life. I don't know if you're um, sitting on a bus or in traffic for three hours a day, um, which takes three hours away from your ability to write even though you're not working during that time. Um, I will say that's probably the hardest one to, to figure out if you have a long, long commute and, um, and have you know a full-time job and then you get home and you microwave something to eat and you watch you know, an episode of TV and you pass out. That's a really, really tough situation. Um, it's also, it takes a huge, huge, huge emotional toll. So. Um, I may not be able to help that person, um, but here's when, when my life was a little more complicated, here's the method I did. I took, um, oh, I don't have one nearby, I don't think. Um, I took a pocket size notebook. Obviously most people have phones and you don't need a, a pocket size notebook, um, but whatever it is that you can take notes on, keep it on you at all times for about a week. Uh, that's the first thing. And then don't write in the car or anything, but if you are like a bus taker and you can write two lines, like I get car sick. Um, so I wouldn't, I can't read or write on a bus, which is unfortunate because it seems like an excellent time to do it. <laughs> um, but note when you have downtime, note the times when you're pulling out your phone. And again, that's a, a difficult thing to remember because I feel like as soon as I grab my phone, I'm accidentally on an app that will distract me. Just totally by accident. Um, so note those times and then guess about how much time you have then. Usually it'll be like two minutes and you're on the toilet, right? Um, maybe that's a really long toilet trip. Um, I'm, I'm now thinking back to, um, I taught at a preschool when I had that three hour commute by bus. Um, and the times when I would have my phone on me would be in the bathroom or on break. Um, but I got something super sneaky then. And this is when I started doing that notebook method of you know, carrying around a notebook <clears throat> in my pocket and noting when I had free time. Um, I couldn't have my phone on me. I was working, I was caring for children. But during nap time, that was about the only thing I could do. I had done, previously I had done Sudoku. Like I, I could be at least journaling or taking notes on my writing at this time. 
Um, but that's not a time that I'm guaranteed no interruptions, but it is a time to take advantage of. So those are two different things that I want you to take note of in your in your week long or whatever journey with this notebook in your pocket. Like, is this a time that I'm definitely interruption free or is this a time when I get a little bored? Those are two different things. So note one, proper, proper free time when I won't have interruptions. And um, let's say that you are working in a preschool and nap time is pretty reliable. Once you get that last cranky kid down, um, you'll have 15 free minutes, almost guaranteed. Um, life doesn't come with, you know, total guarantees, but almost guaranteed. Um, and then, you know, then cool. That is a time. If it's not, um, then what I would consider that time is, um, note-taking time, right? This is a time for me to process and do that one thing every day um, to further your writing. Like this is a time to write down writing ideas. This is a time to write down um, a little bit of dialogue, some character development, a timeline, um, and, you know, maybe make a to-do list for what to do next time you have this little chunk of time. Um, most of us probably aren't working in preschools, uh, particularly in uh, in COVID times, uh, I was going to say in 2020 and it is not 2020 anymore. Um, so then other times, right. Um, probably not your bathroom break, but you do you, um, maybe, uh, you have a couple of kids and there's a time when they're super occupied with school or just finishing school and having snack. And you're like, uh, you like to check in on them then because you um, like to check in with your kids, especially if you're doing online schooling and it's super, super hard or um, you're doing hybrid or in-person schooling and they just got home and you're worried about them, right? Check in with your kids, do whatever you normally do. Um, but maybe you get a time then when they're having their snack or blowing off steam. Um, you know, whenever your kids get their free time, how much free time do you get at that time? Again, I know um, being a parent basically means there is no free time, right? Even if you're not working, even if you're not hanging out with your kids, you know, you're um, doing chores or groceries or cooking or whatever, but just make note over, I say a week, that's what I do when my routine changes, when you will have time to yourself. And I want you to make note of how much time it's going to be and not, um, not put any pressure on yourself there either. Um, just whatever is, just through, throughout the day, whenever you do have a little bit of time alone. And this is, we're gonna figure out within your own routine, and even if you don't have a routine, you know, when, when you'll most consistently have um, no interruptions. And that's really, really, really hard. And it is a huge, huge privilege. So I don't want to um, detract from that. Um, so I'll probably keep repeating it. Um, but I'm trying to go through, you know, what a couple different people's average day may be. And I think that the people who have the most difficulty with this are going to be parents and uh, followed by, you know, people in the service industry. Because even when you're, um, even when you have downtime at work, you're on your feet and you don't have privilege of writing or letting your mind leave work or leave children. Um, so those are the really hard times. I think this has been, um, I've been theorizing this for some time that this is why writers always tell you to write first thing in the morning. Um, but I'm personally not a morning person. And if you tell me to wake up before I absolutely have to, um, you're probably not going to get hurt. I'll probably just stare at you like you're deaf <laughs> because I'm too tired. Um, so following that, I have tried it um, when I've had really, really busy life with, you know, a long commute and no downtime during workday. Last part of the day, which a lot of people think is a bad thing to do. A lot of people say that the reason you want to do it first thing in the morning is because you're fresh then. Um, I, again, I'm not a morning person and the idea of being fresh in the morning is ridiculous to me. Um, I'm not even human in the morning. I'm just like a grumpy cloud who takes up space and 
sometimes trips. So, <laughs> um, but I understand like at the end of the day, you might have the whole day's baggage weighing on you. And I don't really think that's a problem. Um, when it has been a problem for me, I take that opportunity to journal. Um, gross. I, I really don't want to phrase things like, um, like hurdles are opportunities because they don't feel that way in the moment. Right. Um, but if I do get a moment of free time and I am blocked up and I had a rough day, then journaling is the thing I have to do, or I'm not going to be able to be creative anyway. Um, so I also count that as writing when it's hard to do writing. And when I finally get a little bit of space or time, uh, and I have to journal, I'm going to call that productive writing time because, well, you need to be easy on yourself, first of all. Uh, second of all, I am technically writing. And third, there's no writing that's going to happen if I don't do it. So that totally counts. Um, I also want to make note that having a break at work and having, you know, you, you get to go sit somewhere private for 30 minutes um, and you've been working all day and you're tired and you do have um, kids, roommates, spouse, uh, whatever to return home to and you're just exhausted, you don't have to, you're not obligated because you're an artist to use that time to make art. You also deserve breaks. And that I, I think taking breaks, taking time for yourself to exist and breathe and, you know, eat or look at memes is valid and important to being an artist. Because if you don't get those breaks, if you don't um, have time to be you and be alone and know who you are as a human being, um, you're not going to be really making art anyway. Um, I think you know, there's a lot to be said too for creating art when you feel all stopped up and emotional and terrible because you need to get into that into that habit. Um, but if you're not feeling up to it and you force yourself, you're just gonna feel crappier. So make sure, you know, don't, all of my advice should always be taken with a grain of salt because I never want you to overwork yourself. That's, um, that's number one. You're not gonna be making art if you're not feeling up to it. And then you may learn to hate making art. So not that. Um, I also think, um, I just said something about, um, you know, being exhausted and always having someone to answer to, you know, that's, that's one of the hard things I, I understand. And I um, don't want to overlook about parenting, even if you think you have some free time, you don't. Um, I recognize that and I don't want to undermine that, um, which is why you're gonna carry around this notebook or your phone with a little notes app open for a week at least to notice, or so you can take stock of when do I have some consistent time where there aren't interruptions. You know, it's not gonna be every day and that's okay. Um, as long as it's sometimes, as long as it's relatively consistent. But you know, after a week, maybe two, you will start to know, oh, look at that, 2.15 every day for whatever reason, I have 15 minutes. Um, and then if you're someone who works well with organization, um, you can make yourself a schedule, right? Okay, the first 2.15 of the week for 15 minutes, I'm gonna make a plan for what I wanna do for my other 15 minutes for the rest of the week. Um, so there's your to-do list on on Monday. Let's see this, let's say this is a weekday thing for whatever reason at 2.15, you get 15 minutes and it's not your you know, scheduled break. It's not lunch. It's not um, fixing a meal for someone else because those are not breaks. Um, that's not downtime. If you've got a whole to-do list to take care of and you need that time to do something else, that doesn't count. Um, and I don't, I don't want to undermine how busy and stressful life can be, particularly when your work and your home are in the same space, um, particularly if you don't have a door to close, because those are um, those are privileges. You know, um, a lot of people have offices or spare bedrooms or bedrooms, um, and they can close the door and be away from their roommates or children or distractions. But a lot of people don't, and that's what we're doing here. We're we're searching our own lives. We're looking at our own patterns to find when we can, in fact, find that time and space. Again, okay, so um, Monday, you find just about every day during the weekday, uh, 2.15, you get 15 free minutes. 
and usually you're just scrolling on your phone and you are one of those people who's like, I'm not gonna doom scroll, I'm gonna be productive with those 15 minutes. So Monday, you make a list of what you wanna do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with that 15 minutes. Tuesday, you know, you start on your um, character development or whatever. Um, you have a list of poems that you want to work with. Um, maybe you gather poems that you're gonna be reading on Wednesday. Maybe Wednesday, it's too hard and you had a really rough couple of days and you need to journal, do it. Um, I am never gonna say that there's, you know, one thing that is just definitely not part of the writing process because anything can be, and we need to also give ourselves credit for that. You know, if you um, listen to podcasts while you cook, um, but those podcasts are about writing or they're about the topic that you're writing about, or their um, bios of poets that you love. I have a really hard time with podcasts and can only listen to them when I cook. Uh, so I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't totally know what podcasts are out there, but I assume all of them. I assume if there's something that exists, there's a podcast about it. But you know, if it's relevant to your work as a writer, or if you love podcasts and haven't yet looked into stuff that'll help your writing, you know, um, this is also the perfect opportunity <sighs> opportunity um, to to do one thing every day to further your writing. Um, if the best you can do is multitask, you know, if you um, if you're also trying to work in a workout, you know, this is the time to to work out to that podcast or um, dictate to your phone the things that you want to be writing. Uh, it's part of this is about being creative, right? Um, we are stuffing our schedules really, really full if we're searching for 15 minutes where we won't be interrupted and um, we'll have the time to sit. Like that's, we're really stuffing our, our schedules full. I also, you know, don't want to take away from your, your, your chill time, right? Um, you do deserve time for you. So like, if you really need to unwind to a sitcom, like don't, force yourself to give up your unwind time. Um, I don't, you don't ever want to imply that that is not just as important to your writing or your art, because it is. If you are not feeling well, it's going to be harder to, to find time and it's going to be harder to make art. So I know I keep interrupting with that tidbit, but it's very, very important and you should always prioritize yourself if you're prioritizing your art. Um, you're an artist and, and there is no art without the artist. There's a philosophical debate, I'm sure, in that sentence. Okay, so you walk around with your little notebook or your phone with your notes app for a week and there's nothing consistent in there. Then what? <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> um, do it for another week and you know, um, second week, second weekends, and you've got nothing, and you're not going to do this for a third week because it's a crapshoot. Um, it's not a crapshoot. It's annoying. It's for sure annoying. You know, maybe on Mondays you get 15 minutes, and there's no other day, and you're not going to re-examine it because you're tired and life is happening. Um, that's legit. Right on Mondays. If um, you know, it's it's in the car, on the um, to in the thing where you pick up kids after school, and that's the only time you get to yourself, and it's only because that line takes forever. Use it, and and don't panic about how much you get done or how little time you have. Just use the time you have, and and regroup later. Finding time without interruptions is a feat. And as artists, you know, we want to consume the art that, that we love in addition to creating it. And um, we want to be relatively clear headed when we do it. Um, because if, you know, I have 75 other things on my mind, I'm probably not gonna be able to zone into zone out, zone in, um, my, my project. So that's, I mean, that's the meat and potatoes, right? That's the, the long and the short. If you're not able to be there for your art, 
then you're not going to be creating well. So um, whatever it is that you need to prioritize, you know, um, with that first 15 minutes that you get, figure out what your priorities are, journal on it. Um, it's not always easy to figure out what your priorities are. Um, for me, that changes a lot, depending on the week, depending on the month, um, depending on how much I've been creating lately. You know, um, it's, it's also probably a luxury that you're able to sit here and watch this. And I've probably been talking for like 20 minutes and, <laughs> uh, oh, I'm right, it's been 20 minutes. Um, and so like, maybe you had to cut off early. That's, that's okay. Just um, in the first 15 minutes that you get or 10 minutes or five minutes, figure out what your priorities are. Do you want to be consuming art and then later making art? Do you want a 50-50 split of consuming and creating? Um, is there a list of projects that you've been wanting to get to and haven't? Um, that's gotta be the first thing that we figure out is what are what are my priorities as an artist with the, the precious few minutes that I get per day, per week to sit and focus specifically on this one thing. And maybe, you know, um, maybe you have 15 minutes and you're gonna take five to have a coffee because you freaking deserve it. Um, that's fine, factor that in um, and don't feel bad about wasting time. Any, any moment spent thinking about your art is, is worth it. And that's why I so love that David R. Collins advice. Um, to do one thing every day that furthers your art because we deserve that forgiveness, that, that thinking counts um, as long as we're focused on the thing. I love my tiny pocket notebooks. Um, uh, a lot of people use apps on their phone to take notes, um, but I think it's really useful because if it fits in your pocket, I mean, assuming you have pockets, uh, then it's you know less easy to forget about. Um, but also whatever little thing comes to your mind, you can write down. Maybe you heard, misheard a lyric and that is now the most beautiful line you've ever heard and you need to write it down because that is your line that you're going to use. Or, um, you know, you heard a sound and you're like, I need to capture that. I need to remember that. Um, you, I know I use this example a lot. You saw a guy who looked like a bulldog and you're like, I'm going to need to describe someone else looking like a bulldog. Um, something occurred to you that was a beautiful metaphor and you need to write it down because you're going to forget it. It's, if you don't already do that, um, you need to start. You know, um, there's this Fiona Apple song called Paper Bag. And I heard an interview with her once in which she said, literally she saw a paper bag and she thought it was a dove. And she thought, wow, what deep depressing symbolism is that? And she wrote a song about it. Um, that's a lot of the time where we're getting our inspiration is from our observations. Um, from our misunderstandings <laughs> and it's awesome. So um, also keeping that notebook on hand counts. Um, maybe you don't get 20 consistent minutes a day or a week uh, where you can just be alone and not interrupted, but how much are you gathering in the 20 seconds you get to, to take a note so that when you do get that 15 minutes per week, you, you have some content. Um, I know that I hope, I hope you can't hear that vacuum. There's a vacuum going, I'm sorry. I hope you can hear me. Um, an example, I live a very, very privileged life. I have a, a door that I can close and um, maybe I can't focus over the sound of someone cleaning, which again, huge privilege, but there are always interruptions. Um, Y'all have seen me a million times before have to shoo a cat out of here. Um, you never know what it is that's gonna, depending where you are um, in life, you know, the little things that are totally normal that will one day annoy you and you can't focus around them. So um, go through life with a notebook or your phone and take note. I say a week is usually all right, but do two weeks. If there's nothing consistent, then, you know, maybe you only get to do it once a week, but that's more than, it's more than you were doing before. It's more than some people are doing. It's something and it's for you and it's for your art. Um, I think I'm about done with that talk. Um, I'd like to remind everybody that we've got our, um, disaster, our 2020 anthology deadline for submissions is January 31st. So if you've got questions, comments, concerns about the work you want to turn in for that, um, hit us up on, 
Uh, actually, the best place to hit us up with questions about the submissions uh, about the 2020 anthology is submissions at mwcqc.org um, because we've got someone on hand specifically for that. Um, however, all the outlines, all the outlines, all the instructions are outlined on our website and on our social medias. Media is a plural word. I didn't need to add that S. Um, and yeah, deadlines. Deadline is January 31. Anything that happened to you in 2020 that you want to write about, we want to hear about. Um, we'll, we're running out of time, but um, we have somebody who's willing to do some editorial help and or take dictation. You don't have to be an experienced writer um, or someone who thinks of themselves as a capital W writer, but I would argue that if you're watching this video, you probably are. Also, if you don't call yourself a writer, who will? Um, following that, we have our iron pen contest is coming up. That's an annual thing that we do. It is, um, if you're not familiar with it, it will run from February 21st, that's a Friday at 5 p.m. to February 22nd, a Saturday at 5 p.m. We give you a prompt at 5 p.m. and then you can write fiction, nonfiction, or poetry. Um, you get 24 hours to write it, turn it in, and that's the contest. It's actually fantastic. I've done it a few times. I have won and I have lost, <laughs> but every entry, um, uh, there's no losers, but I've not won. <laughs> um, every entry um, gets a chance to win full tuition to the David R. Collins Writers Conference, which is, um, I know, I know, I say this all the time, like I'm obviously biased. I love this organization, but like even before I worked for it, um, that was the highlight of my year every year that I was able to go. It is a fantastic conference. We always have just the absolute best instructors. Um, I gain so much from it. So $10 to potentially win that is also dope. Um, and then we also have, we're doing bespoke, bespoke, we're doing bespoke poetry for, um, we, we often do this event at our local lovers open mic. Um, which is, if you're not familiar with the term, it's poetry on demand. So you can um, hit us up. We will have one of our professional poets on hand to write some poetry for you. This is, um, Local Lovers is usually on Valentine's Day. So this can be a love poem or not. Um, it can be for you. It can be for a loved one. It can be for your child. Um, when I've done it, when I've been a writer for it, I've written letters because that's my my baby and you know I wrote uh, I wrote a letter to someone's children um, but it was like snarky and weird um, and awesome by the way I loved doing it <laughs> and I I understand that my um my client liked it too um, but there's you know you you get to dictate what it is that the the writer will write for you and that can be a lot of fun and also you know you can have a conversation with this with this writer and you know, get something really meaningful and really special out of it. Um, there's more information on that on our website. Um, and we'll be posting it to social media later today. That's on me. I will be doing that. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. So those are some things that are coming up. Also, um, feel free to donate. We want to give you more. <laughs> we want to give you more content and we want to give you more um, programming. So um, help us if you're able. Now let's move on to our free write. Um, again, assuming you have this five minutes available, um, I would like you to do what we've talked about today. Note that you have this five minutes available um, and then make yourself a to-do list for the next time. I can't find my timer. I always do this. Uh, I found it for the next time that you have five minutes. Um, if you are feeling stopped up, if you don't think that that's going to be an issue for you, um, I'd like you to write about someone who has that issue. If, um, if you're a poet, you know, um, write about not having time, write about being busy, write about what your schedule is like or has been like. Um, I'm gonna try to write some uh, nonfiction essay stuff on the topic, but I may end up journaling and that's fine too. So five minutes on the clock. If you're checking out here, then as always, I hope you write more light into your life.
Um, I want to note if like discipline is a bigger issue for me, for you, <laughs> Freudian slip there. Uh, discipline as of late has been a bigger um, issue for me for getting my writing done than time. Because like I said, I, I have a door I can close. I'm magnificently privileged in that way. Um, we, uh, we have videos on that too. So here's a thing, and this happens to me occasionally, and I try to forgive myself for it. Uh, I often end up journaling when I don't mean to. Like I, I just said out loud, um, I'm gonna try and write something essay -y in this topic. And um, I wrote like a heading, like this is what I'm working on. And then I went into journal, like I forgot or something. Um, so I finished my sentence, said this out loud, and now I'm gonna move into what my intention was. Um, it seems like I probably need to journal. Um, so I will make time for that. It's a lot harder to write what I intended than to journal. <laughs> Okay, so I talked a lot about um, when I commuted too much and worked at a preschool and now I've gotten into like a real weird area where I'm thinking about that. Could go somewhere that is totally unexpected. Um, never thought I'd write about this, honestly. Um, don't find it that interesting, but um, it could be really fun. Now I'm kind of excited. Uh, right now I'm kind of listing what I want from this maybe idea I'm having so that I don't lose it when this alarm goes out, uh, goes off and scares the crap out of me. <laughs> I know myself, don't I? Um, all right. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, as always, I hope that you will write more light into your life.